Hello everyone, this is Reshma from Edureka and today's video is on Hadoop versus Spark. Now, as we know, organizations from different domains are investing in big data analytics today. They're analyzing large data sets to uncover all hidden patterns, unknown correlations, market trends, customer preferences, and other useful business information. These analytical findings are helping organizations in more effective marketing, new revenue opportunities, and better customer service. And they're trying to get competitive advantages over rival organizations and other business benefits. And Apache Spark and Hadoop are the two of most prominent big data frameworks. And I see people often comparing these two technologies. And that is what exactly we're going to do in this video now. We'll compare these two big data frameworks based on different parameters. But first, it is important to get an overview about what is Hadoop and what is Apache Spark. So let me just tell you a little bit about Hadoop. Hadoop is a framework to store and process large sets of data across computer clusters. And Hadoop can scale from single computer system up to thousands of commodity systems that offer local storage and compute power. And Hadoop is composed of modules that work together to create the entire Hadoop framework. These are some of the components that we have in the entire Hadoop framework or the Hadoop ecosystem. For example, let me tell you about HDFS, which is the storage unit of Hadoop. Yarn, which is for resource management. There are different analytical tools like Apache Hive, Pig, NoSQL databases like Apache EdgeBase, even Apache Spark and Apache Storm fits in the Hadoop ecosystem for processing big data in real time. For ingesting data, we have tools like Flume and Scoop. Flume is used to ingest unstructured data or semi-structured data, whereas Scoop is used to ingest structured data into HDFS. If you want to learn more about these tools, you can go to Edureka's YouTube channel and look for a Hadoop tutorial where everything has been explained in detail. Now let's move to Spark. Apache Spark is a lightning fast cluster computing technology that is designed for fast computation. The main feature of Spark is its in-memory cluster computing that increases the processing of speed of an application. Spark performs similar operations to that of Hadoop modules, but it uses an in-memory processing and optimizes the steps. The primary difference between MapReduce and Hadoop and Spark is that MapReduce uses persistent storage and Spark uses resilient distributed datasets, which is known as RDDs, which resides in memory. The different components in Spark are the Spark Core Engine. The Spark Core is the base engine for large-scale parallel and distributed data processing. Further, additional libraries which are built on top of the core allow diverse workloads for streaming, SQL, and machine learning. Spark Core is also responsible for memory management and fault recovery, scheduling and distributed and monitoring jobs in a cluster and interacting with the storage systems as well. Next up, we have Spark Streaming. Spark Streaming is the component of Spark which is used to process real-time streaming data. It enables high throughput and fault-tolerant stream processing of live data streams. We have Spark SQL. Spark SQL is a new module in Spark which integrates relational processing with Spark's functional programming API. It supports querying data either via SQL or via the Hive query language. For those of you familiar with RDBMS, Spark SQL will be an easy transition from your earlier tools where you can extend the boundaries of traditional relational data processing. Next up is GraphX. GraphX is the Spark API for graphs and graph parallel computation, and thus it extends the Spark resilient distributed datasets with a resilient distributed property graph. Next is Spark MLlib for machine learning. MLlib stands for Machine Learning Library. Spark MLlib is used to perform machine learning in Apache Spark. Now, since you have got an overview of both these two frameworks, I believe that the ground is all set to compare Apache Spark and Hadoop. Let's move ahead and compare Apache Spark with Hadoop on different parameters to understand their strengths. We will be comparing these two frameworks based on these parameters. Let's start with performance first. Spark is fast because it has in-memory processing. It can also use disk for data that doesn't fit into memory. 
Sparks in memory processing delivers near real-time analytics. And this makes Spark suitable for credit card processing system, machine learning, security analytics, and processing data for IoT sensors. Now let's talk about Hadoop's performance. Now Hadoop was originally designed to continuously gather data from multiple sources without worrying about the type of data and storing it across distributed environment. And MapReduce uses batch processing. MapReduce was never built for real-time processing. Main idea behind Yarn is parallel processing over distributed data set. The problem with comparing the two is that they have different way of processing and the idea behind the development is also divergent. Next, ease of use. Spark comes with a user-friendly APIs for Scala, Java, Python, and Spark SQL. Spark SQL is very similar to SQL, so it becomes easier for SQL developers to learn it. Spark also provides an interactive shell for developers to query and perform other actions and have immediate feedback. Now let's talk about Hadoop. You can ingest data in Hadoop easily, either by using Shell or integrating it with multiple tools like Scoop and Flume. And Yarn is just a processing framework that can be integrated with multiple tools like Hive and Pig for analytics. Hive is a data warehousing component which performs reading, writing, and managing large data set in a distributed environment using SQL-like interface. To conclude here, both of them have their own ways to make themselves user-friendly. Now let's come to the costs. Hadoop and Spark are both Apache open source projects, so there's no cost for the software. Cost is only associated with the infrastructure. Both the products are designed in such a way that it can run on commodity hardware with low TCO or total cost of ownership. Well, now you might be wondering the ways in which they are different. They are all the same. Storage and processing in Hadoop is disk-based and Hadoop uses standard amounts of memory. So with Hadoop, we need a lot of disk space as well as faster transfer speed. Hadoop also requires multiple systems to distribute the disk input-output. But in case of Apache Spark, due to its in-memory processing, it requires a lot of memory, but it can deal with the standard speed and amount of disk. As disk space is a relatively inexpensive commodity, and since Spark does not use disk input-output for processing, instead it requires large amounts of RAM for executing everything in memory. So Spark systems incurs more cost. But yes, one important thing to keep in mind is that Spark's technology reduces the number of required systems. It needs significantly fewer systems that cost more. So there will be a point at which Spark reduces the cost per unit of the computation, even with the additional RAM requirement. There are two types of data processing, batch processing and stream processing. Batch processing has been crucial to the big data world. In simplest term, batch processing is working with high data volumes collected over a period. In batch processing, data is first collected, then processed, and then the results are produced at a later stage. And batch processing is an efficient way of processing large static data sets. Generally, we perform batch processing for archived data sets. For example, calculating average income of a country or evaluating the change in e-commerce in the last decade. Now, stream processing. Stream processing is the current trend in the big data world. Need of the hour is speed and real-time information, which is what stream processing does. Batch processing does not allow businesses to quickly react to changing business needs in real time. Stream processing has seen a rapid growth in that demand. Now, coming back to Apache Spark versus Hadoop, Yarn is basically a batch processing framework. When we submit a job to Yarn, it reads data from the cluster, performs operation, and writes the results back to the cluster. And then it again reads the updated data, performs the next operation, and writes the results back to the cluster, and so on. On the other hand, Spark is designed to cover a wide range of workloads such as batch application, iterative algorithms, interactive queries, and streaming as well. Now let's come to fault tolerance. Hadoop and Spark both provides fault tolerance, but have different approaches. For HDFS and Yarn, both master daemons, that is the name node in HDFS, 
and resource manager in Yarm checks the heartbeat of the slave demons. The slave demons are data nodes and node managers. So if any slave demon fails, the master demons reschedules all pending and in-progress operations to another slave. Now this method is effective, but it can significantly increase the completion time for operations with single failure also. And as Hadoop uses commodity hardware, another way in which HDFS ensures fault tolerance is by replicating data. Now let's talk about Spark. As we discussed earlier, RDDs, or resilient distributed data sets, are building blocks of Apache Spark. And RDDs are the one which provide fault tolerance to Spark. They can refer to any data set present in external storage system like HDFS, EdgeBase, shared file system, etc. They can also be operated parallelly. RDDs can persist a dataset in memory across operations, which makes future actions 10 times much faster. If a RDD is lost, it will automatically get recomputed by using the original transformations. And this is how Spark provides fault tolerance. And at the end, let us talk about security. Well, Hadoop has multiple ways of providing security. Hadoop supports Kerberos for authentication, but it is difficult to handle. Nevertheless, it also supports third-party vendors like LDAP for authentication. They also offer encryption. HDFS supports traditional file permissions as well as access control lists. Hadoop provides service-level authorization, which guarantees that clients have the right permissions for job submission. Spark currently supports authentication via a shared secret. Spark can integrate with HDFS and it can use HDFS ACLs or access control list and file level permissions. Spark can also run on Yarn leveraging the capability of Kerberos. Now this was the comparison of these two frameworks based on these following parameters. Now let us understand use cases where these technologies fit best. Use cases where Hadoop fits best, for example, when you're analyzing archive data. Yarn allows parallel processing over huge amounts of data. Parts of data is processed parallelly and separately on different data nodes and gathers result from each node manager. In cases when instant results are not required, now Hadoop MapReduce is a good and economical solution for batch processing. However, it is incapable of processing data in real time. Use cases where Spark fits best. In real-time big data analysis, real-time data analysis means processing data that is getting generated by the real-time event streams coming in at the rate of millions of events per second. The strength of Spark lies in its abilities to support streaming of data along with distributed processing. And Spark claims to process data 100 times faster than MapReduce, while 10 times faster with the disks. It is used in graph processing. Spark contains a graph computation library called GraphX, which simplifies our life. In-memory computation along with inbuilt graph support improves the performance of algorithm by a magnitude of 1 or 2 degrees over traditional MapReduce programs. It is also used in iterative machine learning algorithms. Almost all machine learning algorithms work iteratively. As we have seen earlier, iterative algorithms involve input-output bottlenecks in the MapReduce implementations. MapReduce uses coarse grain tasks that are too heavy for iterative algorithms. Spark caches the intermediate dataset after each iteration and runs multiple iterations on the cached dataset which eventually reduces the input-output overhead and executes the algorithm faster in a fault-tolerant manner. So at the end, which one is the best? The answer to this is Hadoop and Apache Spark are not competing with one another. In fact, they complement each other quite well. Hadoop brings huge data sets under control by commodity systems and Spark provides real-time in-memory processing for those datasets. When we combine Apache Spark's ability, that is the high processing speed and advanced analytics, and multiple integration support with Hadoop's low-cost operation on commodity hardware, it gives the best results. Hadoop complements Apache Spark capabilities. 
Spark cannot completely replace Hadoop, but the good news is that the demand of Spark is currently at an all-time high. If you want to learn more about the Hadoop ecosystem tools and Apache Spark, don't forget to take a look at the Edureka's YouTube channel and check out the Big Data and Hadoop playlist. Thank you for watching this video. Happy learning! I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!